when, when I think about the way that I designed systemology and I, I did it by design to solve many of the common problems by going through the process. Common problems like people thinking, I'm going to need hundreds of systems. The business owner doesn't have time. The owner thinks that they're going to need to do it all. It's going to be too complex. I'm going to need fancy software. The team won't follow it. Systems remove creativity. I've got to systemize like McDonald's. Like all of these, these are common things that I saw pop up and the feedback. And then I built into the framework, each step solves that problem. You know, I, I'm going to need hundreds of systems. No, you don't. Step number one, define. We've used the critical client flow. We've identified the 20% that deliver the bulk of the result. Um, the business owner doesn't have time. Well, step number two, a sign is identifying where in the team does the knowledge reside. Step number three, um, the business owner has to be the person who does it all. No, they don't. They're probably the worst person in the team to be doing it all. Get a systems champion, empower them to do it. Understand it's a two person job. You got the person with the knowledge and then you've got the systems champion. Step number four is all around organizing that knowledge and looking for the simplest solution with the least friction. And how do you combine your systems with your project management, which then creates accountability and makes it clear when you're assigning a task, people know what they're doing when. Step number five is all about integrating and getting the team to follow it. We touched on some of it today and we're gonna make some videos in Facebook to really help further drill into that. But this idea that the team won't follow it comes from a lot of baggage that the business owner has because they go, I'm not a systems person. I don't think I would follow it. And then they think that their team won't. But the fact is great team members, they love and thrive on systems because you show them how to win the game and how to succeed. And if you recruit for that characteristic upfront, then you're gonna find the right people who do follow it. Step number six is all about scale and this thought that systems removes creativity when it couldn't be further from the truth. What ends up happening is there are certain things in your business that have to happen. Like it's the minimum viable set of systems required to run your business. Let's get all of them handled and then it actually frees up space for the right team members to have creative thought. And, and I'll tell a little bit about um, the insight I got uh, running Melbourne video with regards to that, which is a very creative business. And then the final one is um, step number seven, that you've got to systemize like McDonald's. And people think that they have to over-engineer, over-optimize um, right up front. And we just say, no, nah, capture what you're currently doing, not what you would like to be doing. Find who can currently do it the best on your team. Make that the minimum base standard and bring everybody up to that level. Do that and it'll be a game changer even before you get to the optimize phase. So it's a system. It's a step-by-step -step system. You're already on the path. And I want to make sure that you stay on that path and you, you stay on the path to build a business that works with, without you and you achieve that final stage in business systemization. Like I talked about the four stages, we've got uh, the um, survival, stationary, scalable and saleable. We wanna build and get you to that final stage. So you're, you're on that right path. I might just um, jump uh, over to my iPad here. I just wanna do a little bit of uh, fortune telling. Let's again, I love trying to jump into your future and get you to think about where you are now and where do you want to get to? So, perfect. Thank you, Simon. Uh, so, if you think about like your future, your future is going to happen, right? It's just, you don't do anything and the future is going to happen. And here you are right now. And then over here is some point in the future. So let's put you in this box down here. Now, we talked about the possible, you know, four outcomes. When we think about the four stages of business systemization, you've got survival mode, we've got stationary, you've got scalable. Oh, yeah, no, I've done that. Scalable, and then we've got saleable. So if this is where you are now, and this is some point in the future, what is going to determine where you end up? you're already probably in one of these locations. And I remember from when we asked, a lot of people that are in stationary mode. There were some also that are in survival mode. Now I can guarantee if you do nothing and you don't take any steps to systemize your business, in some point in the future, one year, three years, five years, you will either be in stationary mode or you might even drift back down to survival mode because unless you make a change, nothing is really going to change. You have to consciously decide that I want to build a business that works without me. And you might be at some point in the future in the scalable mode or where we're looking to get to is up here to get you to saleable. Systemology is a path to kind of get you on this line and stay on this line to get you up until this point. But it's not going to happen by chance. Your business doesn't just magically systemize itself and you don't magically build a systems culture. Now, 
you're right here and you're already on the path, right? Because you've attended the workshop and you've got your systems champion and you've drawn a line in the sand. Now, you must stay on that path because the longer that passes, the harder it is to jump lines. So if you're on stationary and you stay on stationary, as time progresses, it gets harder. And the reason it gets harder um, is that my son is standing just outside my window and weeing. Um, <laughs> it's funny. That's, uh, the reason that it gets harder um, is because as you hire staff and uh, they get stuck in their ways and your business starts to grow and you do things for a longer period of time, what ends up happening is you just get stuck in a pattern and it takes my son to wee to break me out of a pattern. And now it's hard to get my brain um, <laughs> back into um, gear there. But, but the key here is that um, the sooner you get on this line, it, it will be the easiest it is ever going to be to systemize your business right now especially with COVID, especially with everything that's going on right now. It's the perfect reason to introduce systems to your team and let them know that we're needing to build a systems driven business. Uh, now I'm just going to quickly jump back over here. I can't, I kind of wish that I had an extra webcam that I, that was hilarious, at least for me. Let me just jump back to my window just here. Uh, okay. This is like the world we live in now. That's now considered normal for everybody. I think. Uh, okay, so uh, as long as you understand that you need to kind of make this decisive action, and if you're not going to do it now, when are you going to do it? Like, if not now, when? Like, you've been in business for long enough. The systems are the building blocks of business. They're the bare bones. You've got to get this stuff down. I want you to make this your master skill. I want you to be able to see your business as a collection of systems. I want you to be able to go to work on your systems, and I want you to build the most valuable asset that you've got.